students, yes, master students, PhD students, master, uh, mathematics, yes, okay. Uh, so the other thing uh, that, so, okay, uh, I see that there are not so many of you, <laughs> yes. Uh, so then it might happen that it was not properly uh, announced, yes, how you got uh, the information about the courses happening and how you usually get. Uh, so on the registration page, you just go there, yes, and just see. Okay, okay, okay. And, uh, but it was not in a certain, I don't know, email list which was sent. So you need just by yourself go to page to find this course, yes, and this is the, the way how you can. What? There is what? Ah, there, there was an email. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but then uh, to, to you I have sent the, uh, oh, hello. Uh, so, okay, let us start, yes, and uh, using the fact that there are not so many of us, yes, so, so please feel free, you know, to ask any questions at any time, yes, and then we can adjust speed of lecture and uh, up to you, yes, <laughs> basically. So uh, first uh, I would say a few philosophical notes and after this goes to, to math, yes. So first of all, first two, Lectures will be like mathematical lecture with a blackboard. Yes, I will, I would say, show very basics of quantum computing and so on. Yes, but after this, we will do something very looking like uh, software development. Yes, but uh, quantum software development. So in that case, I would switch to presentation plus blackboard mode. Yes, so it's luckily good that you can have two of them at the same time. Yes, so that's... Uh, Mm, but please be ready that even it is quantum computing that first two lectures are just mathematical lectures, yes? So uh, quantum computing, yes? So that's uh, mm, when we see you hear the word quantum, you feel like you need a Schrodinger equation and so on, yes? And this uh, hard uh, physics. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that exactly kind of to consider model, yes, which is easy mathematical model which actually based on just linear algebra. And uh, uh, okay, why model is like this comes from physics and from Schrodinger equation, yes, but I not really touch, yes, how it happens that the model is like this, yes. So I, I a bit touch but not in a big details. And after this, so uh, the same as you don't know physics when you do and or, yes, uh, computations in computer, in the same manner, uh, we don't need to know Schrodinger equation in order to do calculations for quantum computer. The course will be basically on the level, say, of assembler for classical computers, but for quantum computers. So we will study some very basic algorithms, so I included Plus, a, a plus one, for instance, yes? How to implement plus one. Yes, it's not so obvious, yes, how to do this. And uh, uh, so first of all, let me mention which mathematics I expect that you know yes, before. So this is basically linear algebra. Yes, and here, what I especially need is self-adjoint operators. And unitary operators. Yeah, so this is what I really refer to and this comes from quantum mechanics. And okay, I need tensor products. What? Do you see? So, uh, so yes, and by the way, I 
my handwriting is very bad. I know this, yes? So please feel free, you know, to re-ask questions, yes? So tensor products of linear finite dimensional space, yes? So this is, uh, how to say, linear finite finite dimensional, yes? And uh, in a certain sense, it, that's it, what we need, yes, as a, as a basic thing. I also write complex numbers, but I think it is a joke, yes, for, <laughs> for mathematicians, yes. Uh, so before, uh, so before I, uh, so I would uh, speak all the course about uh, the model of quantum computers, which is uh, called gate-based model. Yes, and it is implemented, for instance, by IBM on a real, by real physical devices. So the, there are physical devices. And uh, okay, I didn't write. So uh, you can go to Google IBM quantum experience. And uh, register on a website there. It, kind of it's free, yes, and there you will get the possibility to run something on uh, real quantum computers, not very powerful, yes, but, but still you can do this, and I really recommend to do this, so I would refer to, first of all, to this model, and the examples which I show will be from IBM. So they have, re so, uh, they have real quantum computers, and small quantum computer with five qubits is available online. You can write a program, send it to run, yes, and if you do this during daytime, it takes one hour to run, and if you do this at nighttime, it takes five seconds to run because <laughs> they have a line, yes. <laughs> so, uh, and I think uh, day and night time is by US, yes. <laughs> United States, yes, basically. So now they, they really have physical devices, so this is something which goes, uh, like uh, there, there is a progress, yes, in construction of them. They have a bigger devices, yes, more than five qubits, yes. Uh, I don't remember, 20 something is the biggest one, but for this you need somehow to have a contract with them, yes. <laughs> I not really know, because uh, also they have simulators, so because when computer is small enough, then you can do a simu simulator by classical computer of what is happening there. Of course, by five qubits, you cannot get anything better than what you can do with a classical computer. But still, it's like, so they have a real device, and I would refer to it because there is a real problem with it, is that uh, all such devices, unfortunately, now are of relatively bad quality. So the, prob the main problem is not the size. Yes, actually the size or they already achieved which allows you know, to do better than classical computers. But the quality is not very good. So the operations which they are doing is not exact. Yes, so kind of we think that if you do or or and, yes, operation is exact. But, but they didn't manage to implement such a quality for quantum computers. Yes? Yes, 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 so, so, so but, but, yes, but the progress is going on, yes, so uh, I'm reading this course in uh, some variation starting from 2018, yes, and uh, each time I ask uh, students, uh, like they I usually do as a seminar, so some talks are given by students, yes, uh, to implement something, yes, and they implement the same program and they see how better each time that the same implementation is working. <laughs> yes, so they really do this better. Yes, so this is gate-based model. I will speak about this. Yes, I, before we start the course, I would like to shortly say that this is not the only model of quantum computers which exist, yes. And uh, uh, my favorite one, among others, so my favorite one is this one, but other is, say, adiabatic, adiabatic quantum computers. Yes, with the 
my favorite implementation of D-Wave. So it, it is based on completely different model. And uh, so basically what they are doing there is that this is a device which can solve optimization problem, discrete optimization problem. Yes, so where AIJ is real numbers and they are given. Yes, and they find QIJ QI is in the is zero or one. Yes, so they are looking for a, a uh, for the realization so of, of zero one, which minimizes this function. Yes, so it's a very hard uh, problem for classical computer. Yes, but it could be done faster on quantum devices. Yes, because of the quantum adiabatic theorem. Yes, I don't want to touch this. Yes, because first of all, because I don't know. Yes, and the second, because it's actually hard. You, you, they don't. The wave does not solve all. Yeah, it doesn't solve all problems. They have uh, this specific problem, but uh, so to understand, yes, so those devices, yes, are of order, say, 50 qubits, yes? I'm afraid uh, to say exact number because it is changing every month, basically, yes? <laughs> so, yes, uh, and uh, uh, those are of order 4,000. Yes, so, the, the, so this one can solve anything. This one can solve only one particular problem. Yes, but uh, the, the size of it is much bigger. What? Yeah, yeah, it's serious stuff, but uh, in both cases, there are some tiny details which are inside, which actually make it not so powerful as in a advertisement proposal, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, uh, so I will not touch this in the course, but if you are interested, you know, we can speak uh, outside, so we are both at IMPA, we are in the same corridors, yes, <laughs> and so on. Yes, so uh, I think that's it with intro. Uh, yes, so kind of this is my contact, yes, my name is Sergei Tikhomirov, yes, as, uh, if you registered, you have heard this, and there are two books mentioned in the, uh, in the advertisement of the course, so I mostly follow the first one, yes, so it's with a lot of details, so you can read it, you know, in, in a bus, yes, so it's very easy, easy like with, up to a very low level. Yes, it's done. Yes, so it's easy. This one is a bit, how to say, more, uh, so uh, with less details. Yes, so, but this one is longer, this one is shorter. Yes, so please choose uh, the one which you prefer. Yes, so I would uh, mostly speak of following this book, but uh, the basic stuff follows so those two books, and uh, there is uh, some advanced stuff which appears in the end of the course, but it comes not from books, it comes from papers, yes, so this is, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let us start. So, uh, paragraph one, one qubit. Uh, yes, so, like, what is one bit? It's either zero or one. Yes, and in quantum world, we call, we denote them like this. Yes, and use this uh, up to now as a notation. Yes, just to understand that this is a quantum bit. Yes, so if you see like this, same as VVV means that it is website. Yes, so the same, this means that there is a qubit, so it's not zero, which is a real number. This is something related to qubit. And uh, uh, okay, all of us knows that in quantum systems, you can be not only zero or one, but uh, in a superposition. You can be both zero and one at the same time. 
And let me uh, consider this as the following. So uh, the state of uh, one qubit is uh, uh, a vector. Yes, so A0 is, an, is a complex number. A1 is a complex number. Yes, so you can consider this notation, yes, as an element of the uh, C squared. Yes, of two dimensional complex space, linear complex space. And this is the state of one qubit. So state of one bit is either zero or one, and state of qubit is a vector in two dimensional complex space. Yes? Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's not it. Yes, so there are some restrictions. Yes, so because, uh, like, first informal meaning, you can think that this probability A0 squared, it is in state zero. This probability like this, it is in state one. Yes. So uh, what exactly this means, I will explain later. Yes, but this is informal meaning, yes? But in that case, there is a natural condition that A0 squared plus A1 squared is equal to one. So it is sphere in a two-dimensional complex space, yes? There is one more thing which comes from physics. It happens that if you have so uh, I will denote this like psi, yes? So I will write like this, yes? So if I have psi, yes, and I have some constant times psi, it is the same. It's physically undistinguishable, yes, so because kind of because this is a model for some physical thing. In the end, there is an electron or photon or whatever, yes. Uh, in the end, but physically, those two states become undistinguishable, yes. So A0, 0 plus A1, 1 is undistinguishable from C, A0 plus C, A1. And uh, uh, since we need to satisfy this condition, this means that norm of C has to be equal to one, yes? And uh, now appears a question, which I very like to answer, how, ask uh, how many real numbers one need to represent a quantum state, state of one quantum bit. So uh, you suggest four. Yes, because two is here, two is here, yes, so this is four, yes. But remember, you have a condition, so not any four numbers no, allowed, yes. So this condition, this is one condition, yes, so one real variable is gone, yes. And there is a second thing. Yes, so some of them are undistinguishable. Yes, so they are the same. And because absolute value of C is equal to one, so this is one parameter family. So it goes once again minus one. So in the end, you have two real values to represent. Okay, like the most convenient form and the form which we always follow is like this. Yes, so I would kind of Igno uh, I would always use uh, it with such that it is satisfy those conditions. Yes, the, the operations which I allowed in quantum computers would automatically make the thing that it is like this. And uh, uh, the fact that, okay, this holds would be, how do I would check, yes? So I would always follow this notation never goes actually to this one, except the first lecture in order us to practice, yes, a bit to, to understand what is going on. Yes, and uh, 
Okay, what are those two real numbers? And uh, uh, those two real numbers are uh, the following. So you can represent everything in the following form. Theta over two, zero plus e to the power i phi sinus theta over two, one. Okay, I can try, yes. Oh. Is the size now better? Yeah. yeah. So you can write it in the such form, yes, and it's clearly what I did here. I choose, I considered the coefficient between in front of zero, yes, and I consider it as a absolute value and a rotation, yes, and after this I got the second variable as it is, yes, so here there I put it as a cosinus, and then here it is sinus because some uh, because uh, some of the squares has to be equal to one, yes, and uh, I can represent any vector like this, yes, because it doesn't it's undistinguishable if you do uh, if you multiply by something this absolute value one, and then. What is? It's a ray, R-A-Y, ray. The state is the ray, it's not the vector, it's a ray. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, 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 yes, it's one, the one parameter family, it's family of states, yes? So, but in that case, uh, there is a such thing, and you might be curious. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now you can ask why I put in a stretch change for why phi uh, is not divided by two, theta divided by two, and the reason is that be, uh, there is a good mathematical representation of it is so-called block sphere. Yeah, so let me just draw a sphere, and let us consider, so theta will be from zero to pi, and the phi will be from zero to two pi, yes, and uh, so any point on this sphere, yes, can be represented as a, you have angle with a vertical line, and you have a, so you can project it here, and you have a okay, project it here, yes, and you have here angle uh, phi. Yes, so like think on a sphere is represented by two angles, yes. And so this is exactly those two angles, yes. And in that case, uh, zero becomes a north pole, and one becomes south pole, yes. And uh, uh, so uh, this is called block sphere. Block is the last name, so there is no meaning, yes, of this. And uh, uh, this is just a good model to, to understand how it's, so we are mathematicians, yes. It tells a lot about how topology of the quantum state, yes. So quantum state is a sphere, yes, it's, it's not, uh, I don't know, two-dimensional plane, it's not a torus, yes, it's a sphere. You can have this in mind, yes? And another thing that it is a good idea to do exercises, yes, so you can practice a bit with quantum bits, yes? And uh, so uh, 
let me consider let me start to do consider some operations which you can do with quantum bit. Yes, is a not. Yes, for instance, not naturally zero should go to one. Yes, one should go to zero. Yes, later we will see that all operations which we can do are linear. Yes, and in that case, because zero and one is basis. Yes, there, then you can say that a zero. Okay, a. 0 plus a11 goes to a1. 0 plus a01. Yes, so they are exchanged, basically. Yes, so this is how it uh, works. Yes, and so, okay, how, question how not operates on uh, block sphere. Yes, so if you have a point, yes, if you have a state which is here, yes, how to find the knot of it? Yeah, okay, you can, this is exercise for whole, yes. And uh, another thing, uh, another exercise is uh, that if you have a, uh, so let us call it two states orthogonal, yes? So if you have, say, uh, A1, 0 plus B1, 1, yes, it's orthogonal to state A2, 0. So you can consider the scalar uh, product, yes, as uh, it's equal to A1, A2 plus B1, B2, yes? So to what corresponds so because uh, you see that there are still vectors in two-dimensional space, so you can still can consider the scalar product, you still can consider the notion of orthogonality, yes, them. So if you have two states which are orthogonal, what means this on block sphere, yes? So orthogonal on block sphere. Yes, so this is uh, the thing. Let me say what I forgot. Yes, basically. Uh, basically, I forgot to say that, okay, I write it like this. Yes, so zero and one are basis of my uh, linear space. But then, uh, how to say, we, we used to write it in a different way. Yes, we used to write uh, like two number to like as a vector there, and you can consider this in a vector notation like this, yes? So zero will be the first coordinate and one will be the second coordinate. Yes, I think that's it about one qubit state. Let us go to- Up to the equivalent vector. What? So yes, as I told, yes, actually kind of, I will always ignore the fact that there exists equivalence unless I need to do some, in, in the end, yes, I need to do some, you know, statement, yes, but it's much more convenient to ignore this fact because a kind of, of course, it's much easier to work with linear object, yes, rather than with sphere, yes, and moreover, uh, how say ne next paragraph will be multi qubit state, yes, and it it doesn't have such a nice representation as sphere, yes, it's much harder, yes, and in that case, uh, how to say, it's easier to leave this one condition, you know, for for separate consideration rather than to try to include it, and moreover, it's not a problem, yeah, it, it never gives a problem because if you do some computations, you get some. Uh, state, yes, and uh, the, uh, all the elements of the model will tell you, okay, if you multiply it, you will, as observer, yes, you will get the, always the same result. Uh, okay, so this is 
one qubit state. Yes, and that let us remember. So it is element of linear space. There are, uh, the state is determined by two real numbers. Yes. And uh, okay, there is this representation. So for what we will need this representation actually? Yes, because as, as mathematicians for us, you know, it's good enough to work with this model, yes? But later uh, I will show manipulations with uh, one qubit and it's much easier to see it in this model rather than in uh, that model, yes? So, paragraph two, multi-qubit state. Let's. Okay. Multi. Yeah. Bigger. Bigger. Yes. multi-qubit state, yeah, so. Yes, the general thing that, uh, okay, quantum computer has qubits, yes, and there's any computer at any time moment, it is in some state, yes, so question is how one uh, can represent this state as a mathematical model. Let me start with two qubits. You cannot define qubits so far. I, no, so I did not define qubits so far, yes, so that's, uh, but. Well, but this is, you know, uh, 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 the following story. So if you start with geometry, it's very difficult to define what is point. <laughs> yes, I mean, if you do an axiomatic geometry, yes? So kind of, there is no definition. I can say the definition is this, yes? Uh, might be I can say a definition of state of computer. Yes, and the rest is a mathematical model and qubit is just, uh, convenient way of thinking about this, and what is also devote, uh, has some relation to physics world. Yes, but I'm not touching the physics world in the course. Yes, so kind of leave this to, to IBM, to D-Wave, to other companies, yes, how to do this. Yes, okay, assume that we have two qubits. Yes, so if we have two bits, there are poss four possible states, yes, of two bits. Two zero, zero one, one zero, one one. Yes. And uh, uh, same as we did here. Yes, so we just put some coefficients in front. So we will do the same here. So a one, a zero, a one. Okay, let us do a zero, zero. A zero one, A one zero, A one one. Yes, and same as for one qubit, so they are element of complex space. Yes, so if our computer consists of two qubits, then its state is determined by four complex numbers. Yes, I, I did not define, so this is, uh, but I, I follow, so this is, the first lecture is just actually to get into notation, yes, to get used with the notation, how we, we operate, yes. So quantum computer is a device which consists of several qubits, yes. It, the device, how do you define a geometry device? No, kind of, look, you try to push me, yes, <laughs> in a certain way of, <laughs> telling material, yes, but I was going to do this in another way, yes, so that I didn't make a formal thing, but I can consider the state of multiple qubit, of two qubits is these four complex numbers. Yes, so if we have something which consists of two qubits, it can be described by four complex numbers. So this is definition if you, if you, if you want to, yes, so this is. And okay, in that case, this becomes a vector in a four-dimensional space, complex space. Yes, with the same restrictions as before. 
Yeah, so the sum of squares is equal to one and uh, uh, the vector, yeah, so vector is equivalent to constant times vector. Yeah, so the, uh, the same two conditions, basically. Yes, now how many uh, real numbers one need to represent state of two qubit system? Yeah, you start with eight, yes, which is now not in one hand, <laughs> so it's not easy to show, yes. It's eight minus one for this relation and minus one for this relation, yes. I would like to stress attention that here, yes, I multiply the whole vector on a constant, yes. So not, uh, so actually if I consider such a system, there is no notion of state of one qubit. Yes, as soon as there are uh, two qubits, yes, you, you kind of lose the state of one qubit. This is kind of the, what in quantum mechanics they call entanglement. Yes, so the, the two, two qubits start to depend on each other. So you cannot consider them separately. And this is the kernel difference with classical computers where all, all bits exist separately and you can consider them individually and you know only how to say manipulations between them. Here the state is in this form. Yes and here so eight minus one minus one is equal to six. Yes? And six is bigger than two plus two. Yes? So the two qubits is a, something richer than one qubit. Yes and a, a good example uh, of this, so uh, so now this I want to to show how, so what is the mechanism of why they're like this. So if the qubits are independent, yes, if there are two qubits and they're independent, so a zero zero plus uh, b, yes, this is first qubit, yes, and the second qubit is like this. Yes, uh, that and they are independent. Yes, so it's uh, it's a possible physical situation. Yes, then as a two qubits, they would be uh, described as the following. Yes, so I just consider their product. Yes, but here appears the question: What is vector times vector? Yes, so this is how the when, when the moment when tensor product appears. Yes, so but I. Uh, I can just write it in the following way. So this is a1, a2, 0, 0. Yes, so the, I just put like this the state of vector uh, bits uh, one after other. So a1, 0, 1, uh, a1, b2, 0, 1, plus b1, a two one zero plus b one b two one one yes and so this is a direct product of states so this is when they are not dependent not entangled how entangled yes not entangled how they usually say. Uh, yes, and in that case, okay, they're in this state, yes, and you remember, so this was two-dimensional guy, this was two-dimensional guy, actually, yes, so then their product is actually four-dimensional, yes? The early times, the early stages of quantum mechanics, this was represented as a product, even Einstein knew about a lot about this quantum Yeah, yes, yeah, so, so the, it's uh, kind of the... It's only conjunction between this and this. Yes, it's, it's kind of, yes, that's very good. This is like concatenation, yes, I would say. Yes, con concatenation of states. Yes, in my... 
Yeah, yes. So that depends on in which university one studies, yes. And in my university, they call it direct product. Yes, so that's. And uh, it's uh, clear that not all the states can be represented like this. Yes, uh, OK, it's clear from the fact that here you need six numbers. And for, for this one, you need four numbers. Yes, so there should be something. Yes, but there is a state which is very clear. Uh, that it doesn't work like this, and the state is my favorite state. So the kind of one of the first programs which we will write, we will generate this state. Yes, so this is one over square root of two, zero, zero, plus one, one. Yes, so the two qubits are necessary in the same state but you kind of don't know in which state they are. So they either both are zero or both are one. Yes, but which of them, it's a probabilistic story. Yes, and uh, okay, so. I think you forgot the bracket. No, ah, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. No, 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 I think I, I did everything correctly, yes. And OK, uh, the coefficient 1 square, screw, uh, 1 square root of 2, yes, because if uh, this condition, yes, is about squares, yes, so this is 1 half plus 1 half equal to 1. Like you could put the 1 over square root of 2 in factor. Yes, so this is, you, you just can, I can, you know, <laughs> read the lecture following you. So this is exactly the next step, yes. So and let us get used, get used to the fact that we can manipulate this as a linear algebra. Yeah? So we do the same manipulations as expressions. So we don't look uh, kind of, we don't necessarily write one over square root of two, one over square root of two. We can do this in another way. We can change the order, yes. I mean, we just manipulate with this as we want, yes, so this is the, because this is just a linear algebra, yes, and this is just a notation. This is just the basis of our linear space. And we just, I don't know, we can call it V0, V1, V2, V3, yes, or 0, 0 with these strange symbols, yes. And, uh, uh, so, okay, uh, why this state cannot be represented in this form? It's easy because, okay, uh, we have zero coefficients in front of zero, one, and one, zero. So there should be a lot of zeros, yes? So either a zero or b2 is equal to zero, either b1 or a2 is equal to zero, yes? And in that case, okay, if a1 is equal to zero, then coefficient in front of 0, 0 is equal to 0. If b2 is equal to 0, then coefficient in front of 1, 1 is equal to 0. Yes, so it's not possible, yes? But uh, in fact, there are a lot of states like which are not, uh, which are not uh, represented, cannot be represented as a product of two, space, of two vectors, yes? And uh, uh, in fact, uh, so kind of what I showed here is the reason why later appears tensor product. Yes, on two by two, it's just easier to, to formulate. So I have a question. Do you usually have a break after 45 minutes or you usually conduct lecture, you know, an hour and a half without break? No, no, this question to... Yes, let, let's have a five minutes break. This is what I got used to, yes. And I think that people should, you know, people are also people, yes. <laughs>
we have some states which are not product of two qubit states which are not product of single qubits. Yes, and uh, okay, so now that's time to go to multi. Yes, we, you know, we practice with two qubits. Yes, now let's do with n qubits. But now I will do it completely formal. Yes, not, how to say, with not a lot of, so to say, philosophical details around. Yes, so if we have n qubit, yes, then it can be written like this. Yes. And uh, yes, and so it is two to the power n possibilities, yes. And in front of each of them, I, I have a coefficient. Yes, let me, yes. Okay. Yes, so each of them is, I call it, say, AK is a complex number, yes? So in the end, this becomes a vector, yes? So this is Psi. Yes. This is Psi. So this becomes a vector, and Psi is a vector in a space of dimension two to the power n, yes? If you assume that n is equal to 50, yes, then the 2 to the power 50 is 1 with uh, how many? 15 zeros, yes? So it's not, uh, how so even it is finite dimensional space, in the same time, you have no chances to write it down, you know, as a mathematician, yes? So that's <laughs> too many, <laughs> dimension is too large. Yes, and uh, with the same <clears throat> condition as before, yes? sum of squares is equal to uh, one, and uh, the vector is considered, oh, yeah, thank you. And is considered to be equivalent, is it turned it on? I'm, yeah, it's okay, yeah? So then it is, and it is equivalent to its multiplication by a constant. Yes, so the, the condition is basically the same as before, yes, but I, now I just do it instead of two qubits, n qubits. Yes, how many real numbers do I need to represent this? Actually, two times two to the power n, yes, which is the numbers which I just need to represent these guys, and minus two, because I still have two conditions, yes? And so, okay, uh, this is exact, uh, this is how to say, we will see that because we are using quantum computers instead of classical computers, we will have several benefits and several disadvantages, yes? Uh, this is the first benefit, yes? I call it bless and curse, yes? Uh, this is the first bless. Yes, is that, how to say, the amount of information which is inside quantum computer of size n grows exponentially with it. Yes, so this is kind of a classical computer, kind of it, it uh, first of all, you have only zero and one. Yes, you don't have real numbers which encodes this. Yes, but in another case, that's, it's still just there summating. Yes, and here it is, Exponential, yes, this is first bless, yes, let me call it, it bless one, yes. And uh, so we'll be bless two, and there will be two courses, <laughs> yes, <laughs> there. Uh, okay, uh, so this is the bless which we have, and this is why actually they're so powerful, yes, because even if you are ready to implement 50 qubits, this is more than you can store in a super data center. 
Okay, might be with 50 not, but with 60, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is uh, the first bless. And formally, that's it. Let us, Charles, yes, you ask what is the definition of state of quantum computer. Let us say that state of quantum computer of n qubits is just a vector in a c to the power to n with those two conditions. <laughs> Yes, so, the, uh, the, but I prefer to give it at that moment, not in the beginning, yes. So state of quantum computer on n qubits is a vector in a uh, complex uh, linear space of dimension two to the power n. What? Yes, but this is, this is by construction, definition, axiom, yes? So why it is tensor product? So it is very, con but I still can use the notion of qubits separately, yes, somehow. So now uh, I did this definition and formally it's okay, but I would like to, you know, play a bit with this, uh, with it, yes, in order how to say. You play a bit or you want to do? No, I... <laughs> No, I play myself, yes, <laughs> with it. <laughs> yes, uh, just uh, in order to, how to say, us to get used and to understand, okay, we, which manipulations are actually okay and which are not okay, yes? So first of all, it's very convenient to consider this is not just C to the power 2N, but this is considered as a tensor product of C2, tensor C2, tensor C2 and times. So, and of course, what I did is exactly the same. So if you go back to the definition of tensor product, this is exactly what I did when I, how would say, what was the basis of tensor product? Yes, it was just you consider basis of one, basis on other, and consider a, any combinations of them. And I did the same, basically, yes? And, but I omitted this. Uh, why it is also important? Yes, because you still can have notion of direct product. Yes, it might happen that uh, your big, uh, I don't know, 50 qubit system contains of, consists of 20 qubits, which are independent from another 30 qubits. And then you can consider this as a direct product. Yes, and we will quite often do something like this. So not that our qubits will be independent, but some operations between them will be in a such that they touch not, not all the system, but touch only part of the system. And in that case, there will be a lot of direct product structure there. And for this, it is convenient to look on it like this. So uh, another thing, I guess, is that uh, okay, uh, it's, you see it's very not convenient notation. There are too many letters, yes, and uh, if I write like this every time, you know, there is no blackboard is enough for me. Yes, it's very often we will write it in the form psi is equal to sum of a k k. Yes, we can consider this as a binary representation of a number, yes? And then we can write it like this. Yes, it's, it's not forbidden. Yes, and it's not forbidden, and I will very often use this. Because in another case, you know, it becomes infinitely long notation. So, uh, one more thing, yes? So when you look onto this notation, it's not clear, sometimes it's not clear how many zeros and ones are here, yes? So when I write this as a state, it's not always clear how many qubits are there, yes? And in that case, sometimes I will write here the index n, where n means the number of qubits which is inside. Because from what we will do later in the course, 
not always n will be here. Sometimes n divided by two, sometimes n minus one, yes, and <laughs> some other numbers will be there, yes. And it's kind of convenient to, to put this as an index, yes. And, but I will not always do like this. And the reason why I not always do like this because uh, I'm lazy, yes, actually. Because sometimes it's obvious or it is not important, and then I can just write, just write, yes. And sometimes it will be important, then I will do uh, the lower index. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, so uh, uh, there is a notion, yes, uh, which I will use later in the course. So it's not needed today, tomorrow, but it will be needed something on fourth lecture. But this is notation because of this I would like to introduce it today. And uh, notation is the following. Yes, so the, the way how I am writing, it's uh, called bracket notation, yes? And we can think, okay, bracket is just, you know, he needs to invent a fancy word for this strange notation, yes? But there is a reason why uh, people do this, yes? Because uh, actually, since we are working in linear space and there, I pronounce the word, word self-adjoint operator, yes, and so it will appear at some point. Yes, then it's quite convenient sometimes to look on a, so if I have, say like this, it's quite convenient to look on a joint vector, yes? And if I have a joint vector, I will write it like this, yes, so the, the brackets will be in opposite direction. Yes, so in the end I will say exactly, so this, like this is, uh, oops, like this. Yeah, where star is a complex conjugation. Yes, so this is complex number, yes, and so it's star is a complex conjugate. Yes, and uh, so this is called bra, and this is called cat. Yes, so Charles works a lot with quantum mechanics, so I think for Charles it is very common notation, yes? But if you haven't seen quantum mechanics in general, yes? So it might be you, yes? And uh, in that case you can write, yes? I don't know, phi, psi, yes? Something like this, so now it becomes bracket, and this is, uh, uh, element of a joint space multiplied on a uh, normal vector, so it is a number. Up to now, it's not clear why we need this, but we will use this a lot. Yes, so we will use this a lot in the course, something like this, yes? And uh, okay, there is one equality which is always correct. This is this one. Yes, basically the norm of vector is equal to one, and this exactly corresponds to this notation. Yes, okay, I wrote it for, for one for one qubit, but you can write the same for any number of qubits. Yeah, with the same idea, this is just element of a joint space. Yes, so, okay, you need to remember something about linear algebra. Yes, so you cannot, <laughs> you cannot. No, no, any, nothing, yes, you have to remember this. Yes. Okay, I think that's it with the notation. Ah, no, uh, there would be another thing, yes. So if I write, I don't know, three zeros, yes, like this, sometimes, oh, oh let me write this. Sometimes it would be more convenient for me to write it in the form, I don't know, zero, one, Zero. Yes, just this is the form how I write it. This is the same. Yes. Just because here I consider them all three together. Yes, but this is notation for for basis vector. Yes, 
And this will be also notation for basis vector. If I consider everything as a tensor product, this is just kind of definition of tensor product, yes? So I just, you know, get used to this uh, notation. So when I later, I will do a lot of manipulations with this stuff, and this would be always, this I will do and kind of, oh, and that's it. Okay, uh, so up to now, we finished with the definition of state of quantum computer as Charles wanted, yes? So now appears question, okay, uh, what, what operations we can do with it? Yes, <laughs> because the state is it's nice that we have this vector, yes, but how we can change the vector, yes? So because any program is that you have code, yes, which somehow changes the state of computer, yes? And in the end, you somehow read out from it, or in the middle, you can also read out, yes, results. And uh, so uh, this is the uh, moment so the, the next two paragraphs will be exactly uh, what we can do and how we can read. Yes, and I immediately say that the reading operation is very different from the reading operation from classical computers. So this is the state, yes, but there will be no option to know what, I don't know, what is A2. No, I can, can, no, I can, you know, I can define a formal mathematical model, yes, but in that case, mm, how to say, uh, somehow disappears the motivation for this abstract model, yes? And the uh, true motivation, why I exactly consider this model and the operations which will be later and I will, what I had measurements, uh, why it is like this, because, you know, there are physical devices which are doing this. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so let us go to uh, paragraph three operations which we can do with a quantum computer. Operations, yes, and the operations, uh, this is, would be the moment when Schrodinger operator, Schrodinger equation appears. So let me copy it on a blackboard, yes. So there, it's d by dt psi is equal to h psi. Yes, but I will not go into detail. Which one? Yeah, this, one? This is I, which is complex imaginary imaginary unit, yes. And uh, of psi, yeah, psi is the current state of a system, yes. H is a self-adjoint operator, which is energy operator, yes. But, uh, yeah, it, so uh, it's, but uh, where H is self-adjoint. So sometimes Hermitian operator, yes, this might be same or not the same, but I'm in a finite dimensional spaces and then in finite dimensional spaces, all of them are the same, yes? <laughs> all of those notions, yes? And so this comes from physics. I don't want to go deep into details, yes, but what we have. Uh, so psi will be, say, assume that this is a st status of quantum computer, whatever this is. So it's also element of Hilbert space, yes. So let us consider this is a state of quantum computer. Yes, it's, uh, so it is a vector in a c to the power 2n linear space, yes. H with a self-adjoint operator, so the, the way how we interact with quantum computers, so the, 
This is the moment. So the device tells what is H. Yes, the device and your code, which you write for it. And then it starts to do evolution with respect to this differential equation. Yes? And this is moreover linear differential equation. Yes? Then, you know, I can try to solve it. Yes, and let me rewrite it in the form which is more convenient for, for solving it. Yes. So this is linear differential equation. And if it is linear differential equation, then okay, we, we know that it's solution because it is a linear one. Yes, so this is psi of t is equal to exponent of Of, uh, <clears throat> of certain matrix times the initial solution. Yes? And the uh, question, have you seen such a notation? Yes, good. So this is exponent of matrix, basically. Yes? And because H was self-unjoint operator, uh, this is H bar is a real constant, T is a real constant, I, okay, is an imaginary unit. So we have exponent times, uh, exponent of a I times self-adjoint matrix. And then it is a unitary matrix. Yes, so it is unitary. Yes? So whatever evolution we do with quantum computer, Yes, it is, so all the changes which we are able to do are unitary operations. Yes, so this is what is going on. Yes, and this is. You don't say it's fine with the h bar. What? h bar, which is h bar. Where is h bar? This one? Yeah. But this is real number. Yeah, it's not uh, way, way, H bar. I mean, I mean, okay, this is a Planck constant, you know, it comes from. By, by, by. What? By oh, <laughs> very sorry, very sorry. But because this, is, this completely doesn't matter, because actually what I'm going to say, yes, that, so I wrote this Schrodinger stuff, yes. And in the end, I end up with a very simple story, yes? That, okay, the evolution comes with unitary operation. And actually what I want to do, I want to postulate this. I don't want to refer to Schrodinger equation. This is a motivation why I make this postulation, yes? Because we have, in the end, a very smart physicist, which, how to say, found uh, the nature of universe, yes? And, uh, and everything, yes, and, but in the end, we are mathematicians, yes, so, okay, let us leave this to people who are implementing device, yes, but there is a fundamental restriction. Whatever is done with this quantum computer, yes, in the end, the evolution has to be unitary operation. And this would be course number one. Yes. So all the changes which we can do are unitary operations. So you cannot uh, do everything what you want. Yes. And uh, uh, so if you compare this to classical computers, unitary operations are reversible. So for all, for any unitary matrix, yes, for any U unitary. There exist u to the power minus one. Yes, it's inverse, which is also unitary. So all the calculations which we are doing on quantum computer, they are reversible. Yes? And uh, this, it is not true for what we are doing for in classical computers. Yes, because in classical computers we quite often, you know, end. Yes, do operation end. It is not reversible. Yes, because if you have, say, two bits, yes, 
a1 and a2, yes, and you do manipulation, it goes to say a1 stays and change the second one to a1 and a2, yes? So at that moment, okay, you cannot go back anymore, yes? So the correct analogy of, uh, uh, for quantum computers and classical computers are reversible computations. And reversible computation is a, for those, you know, who study theory of computation, yes, there, is, there exists mathematical theory of computation, is a relatively restrictive thing, yes? So, okay, in general, it is known that uh, any irreversible can be replaced by reversible on a bigger <laughs> set of bits, yes? But, okay, here we have just 50 bits, yes? So, 50 could be, so it's not a good idea to increase the number of bits which we are needed, yes? And so this is, a, uh, this is a serious curse, actually. That, and uh, if you want to build any analogy, yes, uh, you, you should start with a classical reversible computation, yes? And then actually later we will see that for any classical reversible computation there is a way to implement it on a quantum computer. It's easy way, yes? I mean, uh, you don't need a huge you know, intellect to do this. Yes, there is an algorithm how to do, how to make it syllable. Yes, but uh, uh, this is a curse one. So the all operations are unitary. So basically now it's time to define the program. Yes, and the program is... No, but look, so here this is another story. So we are want, to, what, what is the goal? Yes, what I want to teach, yes, in the end. So assume that there is this device, assume that IBM is very good and IBM is very good to, for imp, you saw this nice uh, Mobius strip, yes, which is printed by uh, IBM. And uh, so assume that they are very good. And tomorrow appears uh, the greatest uh, quantum computer, yes? Uh, then the goal is that you uh, understand uh, how it works, not in terms of physics, but in terms of software development. Yes, and you are ready to create algorithms. So, and uh, if you have algorithm, you have a goal. Yes, you want something. Yes, and so this is uh, how to say the fact that each operation is unitary is your restriction because if you can do more than unitary, this you can do more. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, uh, yes, so the, there are a lot of things which you can do around quantum computers, yes? I kind of speak about writing programs, not about information, yes? About, not about how to transfer information, about how to write programs and how to do some algorithms. Yes, and by the way, I forgot to say that, of course, the most famous algorithm is the Shor factor and algorithm. Everybody is afraid that when we invent uh, quantum computers, all our uh, ATMs would be broken, yes, and uh, all our bank system stops to operate, yes. Uh, but actually, I'm go okay, I will touch this part, yes, but of co uh, in certain sense, my mind is more thinking about other applications of quantum computers. So, as other applications of quantum. Yeah, like, like, uh, like what? So, uh, solving PDs, uh, making faster work with linear algebra, you know, do the co computations which we do on our classical computers, yes, which uh, sometimes are slow, yes, how to make it faster. Yes, and for instance, inversion of linear operators can be of big matrices can be done faster there, yes? So not only unitary, yes, where well, uh, unitary is here, of any matrices, yes? But uh, there, there are a lot of details inside, yes? Quantum Fourier, uh, uh, fast Fourier transform. It's exponentially faster can be done, 
Yes, and actually this is part of the short factorization, in fact. <coughs> but you can use like Fourier transform is not only for factorization. Yes, it's for everything, basically, yes? So, okay, what is the quantum program? Yes, so that uh, on each step, you do some unitary operation. Yes, first you do u1, after this you do u2, after this you do u3, and so on. Yes, and you start usually with a state, all of them are equal to zero. Yes, and it goes to u1, zero, it goes to u2, u1, zero, and so on. Yeah, so this is a program, kind of program is the sequence of operators. Uh, there is uh, one thing, that a question which operators you can physically implement. Yes, and this is, this depends on physical realization. And the problem is that usually you cannot implement any unitary operator. Yes, you can do this only with a small number of qubits because this is kind of uh, still, even that I say the state of quantum system is just a vector in a, in a linear space of high dimension, then still there are some physical particles in the end, in the end, yes, in, somewhere. And operations which you can do, and this uh, energy operator can actually only acts on a few of them. So one, two, or three, yes, basically. Three is the maximum which I met in real realizations. And uh, uh, the what? And then appears question, okay, how this looks like. Yes, first of all, let me introduce some notation. Yes, it is called string notation. Usually people write, so this is first qubit. Yes, so one horizontal line is just one qubit. Yes, one horizontal line is one qubit. And uh, usually the true operator, a true evolution which is made is acts on a few of them. So let, let assume that on the first two, yes? Then, yes, okay, it's, here it happens something, let me call it uh, U, let me call it V. Yes, some V, there are some unitary operator on two qubits, and on two qubits mean that in four dimensional complex space. Yes, so V goes from C4, to C4, but then corresponding U1, which is here, which is for the whole system. What? V. So let uh, let me uh, wait a few seconds. I show relation between them. Yes. And so here is U1. Yes, which acts for on, on all. Qubits, yes, because unitary operators which I introduced here must be from uh, C to the power 2n to C to the power 2n. Yes, and in the end, actually u1 would be equal to V tensor product identities on all other qubits. Yes, and then it's a proper dimension of operator and so on. Uh, next lecture, I will show how to manipulate with this, yes, because it, it might be quite confusing, yes, because it's not easy to, to follow, yes, this notation, okay, so which matrix corresponds to, to this guy, <laughs> who knows, yes, like I cannot do in my mind uh, these operations. Yes. So, uh, yes, so this is, and okay, if you have a program, yes, you can, sometimes you will do this, sometimes you have bigger one, yes, and this is the way how I write program. Yes, so I do strings, yes, and on string I put squares with operators. It is called string notation. 
Yes, and this is actually the most, uh, how to say, the easiest uh, way to, to see what is going on. Yes, and it is used in this IBM quantum computing. Yes, so it's called quantum computing experience. So, uh, <laughs> so next paragraph is measurement, but this is in my uh, knowledge, this is the hardest, this is the most contradicting to intuition, I think, yes, that how to, so assume that we do did this operations, yes, what, uh, how to say, how we can understand what, how we can read out information from quantum computer, yes, so I don't want to start it in last 10 minutes, yes, because, uh, so might be you have questions, yes, on, on what has happened up to now. No questions. I, I, you lost me at the end, so I don't know about the students. Okay, so at, at which moment uh, I lost you? <laughs> what, what are you trying to, I mean, what are you trying to do? Program, you mean you trying to program, I mean, there are lots of words which are not defined. Like program, what's your program? So, so okay, when I uh, write, uh, so, Okay, when we work with computer, yes, we usually have some program, yes, which. Yeah, but you need a mathematical proof, so what, you have to define that problem? So it's, you see, this is not completely mathematical, this is not completely computer science, yes, of course, yes. So, uh, kind of, the mathematical definition of a program is a sequence, that the program is a sequence of unitary operators and the unitary operators which we are allowed to use are prescribed by device, yes, basically. Physical implementation, yes. So, so but now, because now, you, you see, in the end, uh, it's not only important that I have a good mathematical theory, but it's important that, you know, the, <laughs> there is a device on which I can run it, <laughs> yes, it's, it's also important. And the other, and uh, the last thing is, uh, was the following. So, in fact, yes, all these unitary operators, which would be allowed by devices, have the following structure. So this is some operator which acts either on one qubit, on two qubits, or on three qubits, but Okay, this is only because of the current implementations. Might be I will read the same course in five years and they will be, I will tell something different at that moment, yes? And, uh, uh, the, and the tensor products, two identity operators for the rest uh, part of the quantum computer, yes? So this is what, what would be usually is happening, yes? And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's it, <laughs> yes, basically. So you can consider program as a sequence of unitary operators. But if I start to do mathematical thing, it become kind of boring, yes. <laughs> it's, it doesn't show for what I'm doing this. Yes, a mathematical definition that program is a sequence of unitary operators, and the unitary operators have to be taken from the list which is prescribed by device, yes. And um, all of them has a form that this is operators acting on small number of qubits, tensor product identities. Yes? Small means? One, two, or three. Right now. Right now. But what prevents you from thinking about more? I mean, yes. Mean nothing, yes, nothing. So, so the theoretical part, yes, so theoretical part, mathematical part, do not need to say this. Yes, so, so there is no, okay, no fundamental known to me, fundamental law of physics, which tells me that, okay, it should be one, two, or three. It just happened that in current situation, yes, and the true situation is the following, that actually most of them do only one or two. And even for operation with two qubits is of very low quality. So the quality, the, 
is less than 99%. Uh, yes, and they imagine that if you do mistake in operation with probability 1%, uh, this means that if you have 100 operations, then you necessarily make a mistake. Yes, kind of. Yeah. No, most of the time, yes, not necessary, of course, yes. Which means uh, that, and of course, any real program would contain more than 100 operations, yes. Yeah. Do you remember a time when it was two instead of three? Uh, what? Do you remember a time when instead of three it was two? So, no, it's, it's, uh, it's now in most of devices two. So Currently. It's three. So, the, the re three. so okay, in, in the IBM computer, uh, let, let me tell that statement which I know, yes, which is kind of true. And the IBM computers available publicly, yeah. yes, uh, op allowed operations are only operations with one qubit or two qubits. Yes? Yeah, um, but okay, what is happening non public? Uh, the no, so three, like you, you try to, how to say, you, you coach me on a number which is not important. <laughs> yes, I can say what that. You, I, I can say k, yes, I can say k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. positive integer. Yeah, positive integer, yes. Yeah. So the, all of the physical operations use, uh, how to say, operates not more than with k qubits, yes, where k is given by physical device. And uh, currently, for most of the physical devices, k is equal to 2. Yes. <laughs> Which actually arises certain mathematical questions, so which could be. What, 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 what? You, you did not use the word noise purposely? So up to now, I didn't use the word noise, yes, uh, uh, because of uh, the following, yes. So first of all, uh, I, now I speak about ideal quantum device, yes. So assume that it works perfectly, yes. So it works as a should work. Then you would, you would be able to take k equal 10 if it would work. No, okay, uh, look, so here appears the following story, yes? Yeah? So in the end, uh, so if you have it for k equal to 2, yes, you can consider, a, it is a theorem, mathematical theorem, that if you have it for k equal to 2, then you can do any operation on any, uh, uh, on any number of qubits. So there is a certain sequence of operators, yes, which is... Yeah, you, you have a way to build up. But now appears question, yes, which always exists in programming, in software development. But how long will be your program? Yes, so if you do from 2 to 10, yes, yes, then it might be exponentially growing, yes. It, it might kill all the interest. So this is, you know, this is a trade-off, yes? So this is why we have to, this is why we have to fix that some key. Of course, if you do from uh, 2 to 10, you know, it's, even if it's exponentially growing, this is just a fa constant factor, yes? But then we fix 10 and, uh, okay, we, we cannot go from 10 to 50, yes? <laughs> we have to, <laughs> we, we need to stop with something, yes? And, uh, most of the course will be actually concentrated on k equal to 2. Yes? So I will try to reduce everything, yes, to operators not more than on 2 qubits. What is going on? What? And everything, what is going on? Yeah, so you have an image where you like transposition. Uh, very general transposition can be done by... Uh, so the, there are several transpositions. And uh, some of them can be done easily with this. And uh, some of them, so there is a transposition which is shift by one. So if you consider this k, yeah, so, so if you consider, uh, there is no notation, yes, so consider this sum am. m goes to 
a m m plus one. Yes. Uh, this is quite a hard story. <laughs> so so to implement this is a hard story. <laughs> Yes, so that's, and uh, so actually one of the lectures will be devoted to implementation of this, and uh, I show that this is a huge difference depending, do you have an Atsilo qubit, so are you allowed to use some additional temporary qubit, or you want to stay with only with those qubits. Yes, so the, the, the computational complexity becomes dramatically different. Okay, uh, I'm unknown. By the way, I don't know theorems about this. I don't know theorems. Yes, that it cannot be mined faster. Yes, and this could be mathematically well posed. So I can formulate a conjecture. Yes, but I cannot. I cannot prove it, and I don't know the proof in the literature. Okay, so let's finish for today. Yes, see you on Monday at uh, one thirty. Well, I have okay, this is question to, to people from Impa. <laughs> yeah. because in uh, Germany they do like this. Yes. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know what is the typical thing in Brazil.